This episode is sponsored by a steep conversation's favorite, Conjure Tea. Conjure Tea is a woman-owned, black-owned tea business that was founded by pastry chef Shania Thomas Floyd. If you want to support local businesses and drink great tea, Conjure Tea is your answer. The teas I'm digging most right now are Golden Ticket and Decadence. Decadence is a tasty tea that is exactly the combination you'd hope for from a pastry chef. Black tea with rose petals, strawberry pieces, and cocoa nibs. If that's not your bag, you've got to try Golden Ticket, a turmeric-based tea that helps with joint stiffness and inflammation. I was never on the turmeric train before, but let's just say my joints aren't getting any younger, and this is a tasty fix for that problem. The company has been kind enough to give 15% off your first online order to all Steep Conversations listeners by using code STEEP15 on ConjureTea.com. That's promo code STEEP15 to get 15% off your first order at C O N J U R E T E A.com. I took a job at General Mills, which was horrible. Like, yeah. I can't stress Were you enough. Captain Crunch? Very close. I was yeah. the Honey Nut Cheerios B. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. I think Honey Nut Cheerios once did a collab with Usher. Wow. I think that's true. Then I might be you want to give me the Honey Nut in my own Cheerios. Yeah. Okay, well, like I think we should probably just wrap up the podcast. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing better than that. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> We are drinking today, and I want to yes. be clear. So you're not a big tea drinker. I like it, but I, I usually coffee. Coffee. I, well, yeah. here's, I don't think there needs to be a divide between coffee and tea. I like both. There doesn't, but it's you kind of, you know, you tend to go for one or the other. But yeah, I guess it, if you go morning coffee, maybe you go afternoon tea. Good. I like to sometimes, sometimes I like to edge myself, and I'll just, I won't have any caffeine until after <laughs> lunch. And then I'll just shit pump myself with coffee. Oh, lovely. And just fire, fire me up. What is your coffee drink? I usually these days, because I can't really walk because I have a torn Achilles. Uh, yeah, I love that. Do yeah. a little rock cats for the people. Yeah, yeah. For people listening, not watching, he kicked his leg up very uh, impressively, I would yeah. say. No, I'm, I'm a, aside from my torn Achilles, I was once a great athlete, but. Um, uh, I see, you know, it's weird. I never was. Yeah. Is yeah, that surprising? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But these days I'll just make a nice coffee and then I ice it down overnight. And then I just do a little iced coffee with oat milk. Oh, you know, my own little barista. You are a little barista. I am a little barista. You have a whiz in the kitchen. Yeah. Well, what we are drinking today, specifically for you. Yeah. Because I care about you so much. Yeah. Are we getting too emotional too early? I don't know. We can fuck. Oh, oh, good. This is Conjure Tea. This is called Purge Me. It's a green tea. So for people sleeping at home between 175 and 180 for about five minutes. There's a little bit of citrusy elements in it, I think, when I drank it. I don't yeah. Know. Are you catching that? I would agree with the citrusy elements. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, as someone who doesn't drink tea a lot, you're probably like, yeah, it's tea. It is tea. Yeah. But it's a solid cup. Here's the thing. I think that like a lot of people who don't like tea haven't found a tea that they like yet. You know what? I have a tea that I like. What is it? Rooibos. Rooibos? You like rooibos. What particular kind of rooibos? Well, let's see, now we've gone too far. Oh, okay. No, no, that's it. That's the line. I just, I um, got to live in South Africa for six months. That's where I started stand up. They're crushing Roy Boss out there. And uh, hold, hold. and I was like, this tea is delightful. You can put milk in it. Hold on. I have so many questions. So you lived in South Africa. I did a semester at University of Cape Town. Was and, the that, purpose. and you decided, which is already amazing. Did, was there something that made you want to go there? Ultimately, I got cut from my college baseball team. And I was like, fuck, I was supposed to be a college athlete. And I was like trying to figure out stuff stuff to do yeah. and looked at the study abroad program and I, you know, only speak English. So that narrowed it down and I uh-huh. wanted to go somewhere cool and kind of nifty yeah. and uh, picked Cape Town. And while you're there, you decide, you know what? I'm going to start doing stand up. Well, the, the whole impetus for it was like, all right, if I'm going to do this thing and I'm lucky enough to have this, you know, rare, unique, cool opportunity, like then I should try all sorts of new things. You know, I should sure. try everything I've ever wanted to try. Like I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. I should become whoever I want to be. I was certainly looking for something. I tried a bunch of stuff. I had a radio show out there, which is cool. They, they, the way that they structure school out there is so different. You can pick like clubs based on your interest. Like I thought about doing capoeira, like Brazilian yeah, dance yeah, fighting. Yeah, yeah. I went to one like jujitsu thing and I was like, this sucks. I don't mm-hmm. like it. Sure. But like some of my friends were just, just on the rugby team. Like you could just say, I want to do that. And they're just 
on the team. And so you could just pick your interest. So I picked radio. I had this radio show. My friends would listen to it at the house and enjoyed it. Thought it was funny. And one of the guys went to this bar where you could buy weed. The bartenders would just sell you weed. And they had an open mic. And he was like, dude, they have stand up. And I was like, he's like, you should do it. And I was like, fuck yeah. So I practiced for like two weeks. You know, I watched like Eddie Murphy's Delirious sure, like multiple sure. times. And I like wrote stuff and set it to the wall for like two weeks. And then I went and did it. And, and I was, was like, I was like, Dan, I, it's, yeah, I'm gonna do that forever. It was that good. Well, I was delusional. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, I'm amazing. Oh, dude, I was a psychopath. I I got off, so I did seven minutes, and I was like, okay, that Your was good. Your first mic was seven minutes long, and then I went back a few weeks later with a brand new seven minutes, and then I was like, dude, I'm gonna fuck. It. I was like, I got 14 minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to that. I'm gonna just chi I'm chipping away at my first hour. Yeah, and when I get back to the states. I'll start shopping this around. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll get HBO on the horn. Why not? And uh, I, I just, I got to get up to my 60 because I'm at 14 minutes. Dream big. Of course, you know, objectively not great, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. it felt great. At the time, it felt great. Sure. And then, yeah, I mean, I, th I think most people who do this, I was like, yeah, kind of a psycho, like just delusional for a few years and, and then eventually got good. <laughs> do you have a single joke from your original 14 minutes that you use? No. Really? No. Do you remember any of them? Yeah, I had this whole thing about, it was very specific to South Africa. And I think it really worked because, you know, the whole like thing with being a stand-up is like being kind of an outsider and explaining stuff to people in a way that they haven't seen it before. Sure. Well, it's kind of really easy to do that when you're traveling because you are seeing something for the first time that's familiar to them. So the way you describe it is like, oh shit, I didn't even, <laughs> they had these, the way that you get around were on these things called mini buses. It was like a van packed full of people and they would just drive up and down the street and there would just be a dude who would just hang out the window and scream the direction they were going. So they'd be like, Cape Town, Mowbray, Mowbray, Mowbray. Like, and they would just scream and then you'd get in and you'd like throw coins at him, you know, and he'd like put it in the bag and then you just sit there and then you just get out. So I, I did this whole bit about how I like wanted like that internship to be like the chief window officer. And like, it was this whole thing. I don't remember I mean, it exactly. That's funny. Yeah, but like they thought it was really funny because like, they're like, that's what do you mean? That's just how we get around. Yeah, and I was odd. like, this is fucking it's insane. It's normal. And I think that was that was like a signature bit. <laughs> Sign it was, a, that signature. was a signature bit. Yeah. Yeah. So you put on the full like purple leather suit and you just yeah, your signature yeah, 100%. bit. Hundred yeah. percent. No, obviously. Yeah, I, yeah. I still I do that. a red leather suit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I still do full body leather suits to mics. I don't yeah. even do it to shows anymore. Yeah. I do it to mics though. Seeing the Eddie Murphy thing though was like, oh, this dude's up there. He's like, I'm cool and I fuck. And I was like, comedy You're is like, I'm gonna. Comedy is tight. Yeah. Comedy is awesome. And then now I'm like, you know, getting older and I'm like, yeah, I'm old, my dick <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're, like, you're like, I think I finally you just get end it. Up realizing what life is. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, yeah, it's not about me being cool up there. Mm, no, I've never. I, what's funny is I skipped right past that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I zoomed by it. How did you start? Here's the real truth of it I was in a band from about 16, 17 to about 22. Mm -hmm. We were not bad, bad, but like I heard our first record the other day and was like, like how did this happen? Yeah. I was 17 and I didn't, you know, it yeah. was a 17 year old's effort. Anyway, when we would get on stage, I loved playing the music. Every single show we played, the space between the songs got a little longer. <laughs> and I, because uh, uh, I was having much more fun. The, yeah. Goofing off with the audience. Yeah. I did improv in college and then I took a job at General Mills, which was horrible. Like yeah. I can't stress Were you enough. Captain Crunch? Uh, very close. I was yeah. the Honey Nut Cheerios B. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Which is weird. I think he has a name and I don't remember what it is. Buzz, maybe? Makes sense. I, I'm guessing. That's what I would go with. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, I, I probably Sting. pretty reasonable. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, I remember, I think Honey Nut Cheerios once did a collab with Usher. Wow. I think that's true. I think you want to give me the honey nut in my own Cheerios. <laughs> okay, well, like I think we should probably just wrap up the podcast. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing better than that. Let's wrap it up. I took a job at General Mills and I was like, this is a nightmare. And someone was like, hey, they're doing improv and sketch auditions, but you have to have gone through this whole school and stuff in order to do it. And I was like, cool. Nothing like comedy school. I know. And so I said, pass. I'm just going to go audition. Yeah. 
which apparently you were not supposed to do, but I auditioned and they were like, yeah, we'll take you. Love that. Yeah. They're so, like, this guy doesn't follow the rules. <laughs> yeah. He's a rule he's breaker. He's a badass. And he works with the Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah. Thing? He knows Usher. Yeah. Let's get him in. Um, and I said, they were like, yeah, how should we reach you? And I said, you don't have to call. Yeah. Um, that's a good Usher joke. You didn't feel that? I, sorry. I spaced out I for know, a second. it's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I was like pretty proud of that. And um, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Moving on. I'm a little, I was, <laughs> anyone who's listening, like I want you to just like, contact us, tweet at us, just comment about how great that joke was. I think that was top 10 yeah. of all time. Um, anyway, don't trust him. If you're watching, he's winking. <laughs> anyway, I did all that and I was like loving it. And then I started doing sketch improv storytelling and went into stand up because yeah. I realized I couldn't rely on anybody but myself. Yeah. Maybe we all should have trust issues. We're like, fuck yeah. everyone else. That's, I, I do think, yeah, it, it, improv is just always, I, I know it's a valuable skill and it's great and it's awesome and all that, but it's like, what do we do? Warm ups together? Yeah. Yeah. You do. That's crazy. I mean, here's what's funny. My favorite warm ups were the headiest ones. It was always the ones where someone would be like, it'd be like categories. And someone would be like, breakfast cereal. And then you have to go around. And, the and first, that's your wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, You're like, that's my yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. profession. Why? I can't get away from cereal. I don't yeah. know. Why, yeah. They'd be like, baseball teams and I'd be like cool but like whatever it was I was more into the trivia based games where I'd be yeah. like Arizona Diamondbacks get that one you know yeah. and people would be like okay we were, this is just a game because like, you lost and people would be like this is not about yeah. that <laughs> I was like oh maybe I don't belong here I do love that is my favorite thing about stand up because I've always just wanted to do stuff by myself like I never like sure. I always wanted to teach myself how to do things I would space out in class. I didn't want to listen to the teacher. I would just want to go home and learn how to figure out how to do the homework by myself. I just wanted, I'm very extroverted. I, my favorite thing to do is hang out with other people. I like being around people, but I don't like relying on anybody else. Well, I think that's the nice thing about stand up is yeah. like, I was explaining this to a friend of mine that doesn't do stand up, which is like, forget the, the, the reliability piece, which is like, it's very nice to rely on yourself. But the other thing that's really nice is like, it's for people that want to live and die by their own sword. So like, yeah. if I have a great set, it was me. And if yeah. I bomb, it was obviously the audience, but like it was- 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those 55 people were dead wrong. A hundred percent. Each one of them was individually wrong. A hundred percent. But the thing is you either succeed or you fail, but it's it's you. When you're with an improv team, everyone's like, hey, you know what? Nobody laughed, but like we created some good characters. And I'm like, what? Yeah, no, there's too much support. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think that the improv skills that I acquired are very valuable in stand-up. Of course they are. And you learn very quickly who- It's a very, it's a very LASF thing. It's just territorial. It's just like, oh, 100%. that's not- They're not even like that related. They're so different. Improv has more of a like theater kid vibe to it. And For I sure. think a lot of stand-ups are like, we're artists, but what we do is an art. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's I, like a more- Yeah, you do there's theater? More, yeah, there's I more of a, a broken home. Ed, yeah, there's more edge to it. But, but then you watch something like- uh, uh, what was the one that was on Netflix? Middle Edition Schwartz? Oh, sure. Incredible. Wonderful. Yeah. I just realized I hadn't seen that much improv and I watched it and I was like, well, what they did there was actually pretty nice. Or that there's some funny yeah, stuff I was like, right that, was, that was good stuff. Yeah, that's good. But that's I think, good. I think, did Middle Ditch get the uh, Me too Sure did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I, you know, yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> listen, we loved Ben Schwartz. Ben Schwartz yeah. is great. <laughs> Unless anything happens with him, cut this. What clip. is Middle Ditch up to now? Is he just chilling? Uh, they middle ditched him. Nice. Okay, so now we're two. All right, everyone <laughs> nice. watching. He's going to start doing stand up. Is what he's going to uh, do. You know what? I might get go a back podcast, to yeah. start posting clips. You got talent and just delete comments. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You'll be fine. Uh, I got to tell you, if I deleted comments, I'd have a full time job. The number of comments. Like, and here's I delete th like one out of every like nine mean things will just catch me. <laughs> you know, I'll be like at a bar and I'll be like, I don't need to see this shit. And I'll just delete it. And then I'll leave a bunch of other ones up because I'm going to pull weeds all day. No, no. Scoreboard, motherfucker. My favorite comment I got from someone recently was they said, no likes, no comments. Why do you keep doing this? And I was like, just give it a minute. It I just hit the algo. Can, can I tell you something? It already had 15,000 views. And I was like, and had comments and likes. So and it was like a real like check your Wi-Fi type situation. Yeah, I was like, but like it does have those things and I'm, I'm good. But other people have been like, you know, like your ears are satellites. And I was like, look at my earliest clips that I've posted. Yeah. I specifically address that. Yeah. And people are like, oh, this guy could hear the moon. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> right, right. 
<laughs> well, here's the thing. The first eight are funny. And then the ninth one is like, this guy could probably hear when people didn't care about him. And I'm like, nope, I got to believe well, that Well, it's kind of funny because like the, everything incentivizes that because what people are looking for, you post it because you want to get likes and then they post the comment ultimately because they want to get likes. Sure. And so they're looking for an angle. And the angle is to like zag or shit on you or I'm going to try and be funny or under the post. They're trying to do the exact same thing. It's, it's funny. Which is weird because like I don't, I, I never, I, I go on TikTok or, you know, Instagram Reels or YouTube, whatever. I never comment on anything. Right, because you're creating your own content. Yeah, I just generally. don't have the energy to be like, like, oh, I had uh, four minutes in, I saw your stupid face. Like, I don't, you know. Yeah, that would be a wild move to, like, yeah, yeah, be yeah. Uh, creating content and also just hating. But for so, some people, like, they'll do that, and then you respond, and they're like, oh, oh didn't think you said, you know, whatever. Like, And I'm like, yeah, dude, I've got, like, 5,000 followers, man. I'm seeing everything you're saying. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah, people are mean. But I think we're just getting to a point of, like, to some degree, you want more hate. You don't want it to be a higher percentage, but there's a certain number of people who just aren't going to like you. Correct. If a clip gets 5 million views, it's insane to think that at least 300 people won't be like, fuck you, out of 5 million. Yeah, but do those but, 300 but, need to say it? No, they don't, but like it's, they're going to. So like, I can't, you know, I can't sit here and get mad at it all the time. But in my head, I'm just like, scoreboard. <laughs> did your, did You're your, a sad fuck. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. I, then I, and when I, I just don't, I don't reply. I don't oh, reply. Right, I was going to say, so I don't reply. You can't did, feed the birds. Does your, I'm guessing your wife does not do stand up, right? No, no, I'd okay. kill myself. Right, me too. Um, <laughs> but some, Not that it can't, for some people it's great. I just- It would be too much in my house. I just like that we have our own different things. But she doesn't like being public or like Instagram or any of that. You know? I saw the, the proposal from a little while ago. I'm not saying she's not, a, she's not like, I don't like, I can't be on it. But like, yeah, yeah. she's not like trying to create content. Thank heavens. Right. It's nice. And some people it works when they both are. It's probably nice to like creative couples who collaborate and whatever. But I like just having a balance where she's like, whoa, this is crazy. This cool thing. Instead of both of us just like arguing about like, do you have, the, what's the best post time? You know, like I, I don't want that. I want, I'd rather what I do to be this somewhat mysterious, cool thing that I'm good at that she's not like also analyzing the nuts and bolts of that ruins all of the magic and mystery of it but does she ever try and jump to your defense is she ever like what did that person say she doesn't look at it because if she did it would like upset her oh so jess my, my girlfriend looks at it and she goes well i'm gonna tell them that their mom is probably an ugly slut and i'm like no no it's like don't do that don't let's not i love that reaction <laughs> yeah, though. yeah yeah She's your like, mom's a loose whore. Yeah, exactly. She's like, <laughs> what? Like, like someone, someone could say something really innocuous. They could be like, like they could watch it like a clip of mine and be like, not for me. And she'd yeah. be like, you know what else isn't for you? <laughs> Love. Cause no one does it. <laughs> like, I'll be like, no, 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 no. Don't say it. That is, yeah, it's again, you're, you're right to tell her not to do it, but she's also, that's the right instinct. <laughs> yeah. She mama bears real yeah, hard. Yeah. She's like, fuck those people. Yeah. There was one time we got in a fight. She's like, who hurt your feelings? I'm going to kill him. I was like, it was you. And she's like, wow, oh, this is- a I'm allowed to. She's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She does uh, feel that way. Yeah. No one's allowed to hurt Josh, but me. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. When did you actually start filming yourself, putting it out there and thinking like, hey, I want the world to see Joey? Oh man, way too early. Uh, hey, yeah. I have the second set that I ever did. I have one of the Cape Town sets. I don't know where it is, but it, it's on like, a, it's like a private on YouTube somewhere. You've and got to send us that. I got to find it. We're going to um, post it in the show notes. I, I mean, <laughs> that would be, it would be really fun. I mean, but there's, you know, on my YouTube, I mean, there's a clip from, there's like an eight minute set from eight years ago. I mean, I, I took one down. I went viral on Reddit. God, what year? Like 2014. I, I did a set at the end of my college career. This, this place, Sun God, or my college career. When I was you college. went to a university called Sun God? I went to UC San Diego. They have a festival called Sun God. You were, just, you were in San Diego? Yeah. We'll touch on that in a second. Go ahead. That's why they call it San Diego Hammer. They call you that? Yeah. Oh, you um, love looking down <laughs> yeah, the barrel. Yeah, You're like, dude, yeah. That's what they call me. We're in fucking show business. Yeah, true. Listen, uh, I love it. <laughs> go ahead, Hammer. What were you going to say? SDH, where were you going? Um, so I, there was this festival called Sun God, and I, I won 
the like student thing to get to perform. And so sure. I did a set, a bunch of people came out there, were a few hundred people. It was like in a tent, you know, like Kendrick Lamar played later that night. It was like a thing. I filmed so the whole for thing. Kendrick Lamar. That was on my bio. I put that in my bio. Yep. He was on a different stage four hours later. No one needs to know. And I was like, open for Kendrick Lamar. Yep. Yeah. Until I had real credits. That was the headliner. Yep. Well, I, I like hired someone to film the whole thing. And I like dropped the set on Reddit and got like demolished and then took it down. Dem oh, it went viral negative. It didn't go viral. I just got a bunch of negative comments and I took it down. No one was like, he's a student. He's well, I was like, well, I just like, like I said, it was delusional. Like I was like, I'm ready to pop. You know, like my friend, <laughs> my friend was in a band and they were doing really well and he was posting all of his stuff online. So I kind of saw how that was happening. And, and so I, I was ahead of the curve on what I was thinking technologically, but then I, had to shut down the media wing of the department for the next seven years, probably get good at stand up, and then. <laughs> who, who, what was the band? Do I know the band? Probably not. It was called Radical Something. Uh, no, that's a radical nothing. For there me. it is. Uh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, I was the the first tour I ever went on. I was the merch dude for the band. Oh, I actually one of the sets. I did a set and had like a multi-camera thing filmed from that tour. And I posted that and back in the day too. And do great. It did okay, Reddit. actually. Okay, that okay. one was better. Okay. That one was better. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if I've ever, because I, I mean, like I don't look at Reddit all the time, but I look every now and again. I wonder if I was one of those people who was like, this dog shit. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, I mean, they were right. Well, I used to, every time I had a clip, I would like drop it on the stand-up comedy oh, Reddit. And now I'm like, I don't really need that in my life. You, I'm going to see if I comment on yours. My username is, um, it's Joey Avery sucks. Is, oh, uh, I think I remember yeah, that. Yeah, we yeah, had an yeah. exchange. Oh, uh, we definitely did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But no, I, I didn't like it. I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you um, have big ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, th this is as good a time as any to take us to the first segment then. <laughs> uh, the first segment is called the newly friend game. It is like the newlywed game, but we're friends, and you are, in fact, a newlywed, not to me, but to okay. somebody. The correct. Okay, Holly beat me to it, but, yeah. but um, we're going to play the newly friend game yeah. anyway. I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to write down your answer. I'm going to write down my answer, see if they're matching. I'm going to try. Yeah. And then we will do a question for me, and we'll do the same thing. So the question for you, don't answer me. Write down your answer. Okay. Given that I had seen that proposal post that you posted, yeah. I was thinking, where in your eyes is the worst place to propose to somebody? Don't don't tell me. Okay. Write it down. But for you specifically, what you think, just uh, there's really no worse place. You're not going to get this, but I feel good about it. Uh, well, I'm really trying. All right, yeah. flip your board on one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Joey wrote on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Well, that's a good answer. I wrote. I, I, honestly, I wrote something that a lot of people call my podcast, which is a gas station bathroom. <laughs> that's good. Gas station bathroom. That's, that's what good. I thought. Bathroom was my first thought, but then I was like, no, let's, let's put a spin on it. Well, here's the thing. I thought gas station bathroom yeah. was like. What do you think about sports game proposals? Horrid. Yeah, it's Horrible. tough for them, but it's fun for us. Oh, I love seeing like, it. Because everyone, go, like, I think the percentage of people in the stadium who turn to the person next to them and they go, can you imagine the, doing that here? I remember very early on, like, when Jess and I were just dating, I mean, the first few months of dating, she literally goes, I'd rather die than be proposed to it, like, on, like, a Jumbotron. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, prove it. I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be kind of funny to ask actually get engaged and then go to the game like later that yep, weekend yep. and then do it as kind of like a joke. But also, you know, I guess to play both sides of it, that's your thing. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to yuck somebody's yum here. If you're, you know, if you're like, we bonded over, over the Knicks. Yeah. My fa we laid my father to rest at a Knicks game. It's a we special place. We us. laid him to rest in a Patrick Ewing jersey. Yeah. And, uh, which is weird because he, we cremated him. So it yeah. didn't seem to make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we did it anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't. I, 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 that's probably the worst, I think. I mean, there's also like the super obvious ones where it's like a champagne glass with a ring in it. Sorry, before I continue saying all the bad ones, how, how did, did I do you it? do it? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. Champagne glass at a baseball oh, game? Oh, goddamn. Oh, boy. Mine was kind of like pandemic season. I mean, we had to, I mean, this is such a tangent, but we, there's a podcast we had, that's all made yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess it's a good point. We had to leave San Francisco because a meth head was breaking into our apartment. So then we lived with my parents during the pandemic. So we're living 
at my parents' house. Full time? For like a, I think it was like nine, like 10 months. But it was kind of nice because it's a, it's a nice place and like it was out of the city. So it was like, you know, South Bay. There's a place you can go for a walk up into this beautiful it used to be like an old senator's house. So there's this beautiful old grounds that's now like a music and concert venue oh, slash no a redwood forest you can walk around in. So I was like, hey, let's just go for a walk. It was on New Year's Eve and our first date had been a three-day music festival on New Year's Eve like 10 years previous. You so New Year's was a big years? thing. Yeah, I think it was nine, but like New Year's was a big thing for us. So it was New Year's Eve and then- we went for a walk in this like beautiful place that's like special to me, that's special to her. Because there's a venue, we sat in in seats and the rows J and H are next to each other and our favorite numbers are 11 and 12. So we sat in those seats and I just proposed and we were, the, you know, the two of us were together. And then when I came back to my parents' house, they had like champagne and a whole thing. And then we went and our friends were doing a New Year's Eve party. So all of our friends, we kind of had a built-in like engagement party to go to. So then we went oh, and partied amazing. with all our friends on New Year's Eve. So it was great. Okay. So you didn't do any of the stuff. I think you're no. talking. I was talking about no, no, like no, no. hiding in a piece of cake or. Yeah. Mine was, it was thoughtful, but it did not fit a, any basic cliches. Yeah. I plan to, I'm going to get like six, seven, eight rings and then just like do all the cliches one at a time. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Or you, <laughs> I was thinking of sports game. You could put the ring under like three hats and then start spinning them around and you only end up getting married if she can keep her eyes on the, yeah. It's called eyes on the prize. And then you do a thing where it goes really, really quick. Yeah, and exactly. Then, yeah, it and mixes them up. I don't even know if I'll be leaving engaged that day. That's the big piece of it. That's a, And that's kind of, that's exciting. Okay, so here's a good one. This is going to be my question. The question for me, and I don't think there's any chance you're going to get this. Okay. If I were to ever be proposed to, where would I want to be proposed to? Oh, dear. Okay. Three, two, one. Salt and straw. I said, okay. I said kink sex dungeon like the dirty little slut you are. Can I tell you something? I almost wrote that exact yeah, thing. I thought <laughs> that it would Dude, salt and straw? Yeah. For real? I love salt are and straw. Are you an, uh, an ice cream man? I love ice cream. It's my favorite. It's my favorite thing in the world. It sounded like I was asking what your job was. Um, no, I am also an ice cream man. Yeah, no, I, I ride around in the truck. And uh, okay. what's weird is I play the sounds, the kids come up, and then I just put them in the truck. I don't actually give That's them That's good. Cream. Yeah, straight to sex. Well, here's the <laughs> that's not at all what I was. Uh, oh, I know. I, I just thought that's why people became ice cream men was so that they could have. Oh, I thought no. it's so they could smash. I was just thinking about the black phone. You've never seen the black phone, huh? Is you, that a film? Yeah. You don't watch movies. No, the way, the way you black just said phone? that. The way you just said that sounds like you've never seen. <laughs> is it on. always on speaker? <laughs> is it a film? Is it? Uh, is it one of those films they show yeah, in cinema? I have not seen most movies, but I like. I watch shows too. It's okay. like I don't watch. It doesn't you know, sound shows, like you watch shows. No, I've watched shows. What it, can you name a show? I'm watching watched. Last of Us. That's a popular show that I everyone's just, watching. We just caught up. We it's just caught great. up yesterday. It's really fun. It's amazing. It's really fun. I'm trying to think about how to ask a question about Last of Us without spoiling anything. Here's what I'll say. There's a certain I'll call it a kiss that occurred in one of the earlier I episodes. I was thinking about that like the other day. Yeah, I was like, they kind of just dropped that in. And I was like, I wish I'd never seen that. It was wild. I wish I had never seen that. It I, was I'm, like kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> it was disgusting, no. but it was passionate. The oh, way it just mm, kind of. Mm, oh God. Well, don't <sighs> spoil it. Don't spoil That's it. Spoiling it. I don't know. Dude, I, I look. She turns into a, a zombie. Who's the she? We don't know who exactly. she is. Exactly. I'm not spoiling it, but yeah. that thing sticks those little fucking funguses in her no. with a little bit of touch. Uh, there's. It was sentimental. It was. Yeah. Crazy. It was. But it was kind of weird because she was just like she just like didn't know to kiss her because she was already infected, or was is that how that guy infects? Is uh, there a whole group of zombies that just be kind of middle ditching these ladies? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're the Me Too zombies. Uh, I, I need to tell you, if someone says to me, hey, how did the episode go with Joey? <laughs> and they're like, what did you cover? I'll be like, you're not going to believe it. We talked about middle ditch zombies in The Last of Us uh, yeah. uh, world. Yeah. By the way, that's the new, <laughs> that's the newly friend game. If you're done with the board. Um, how did it feel? Was it everything you hoped it would be? I think we nailed it. Uh, two you for know two. What? We, well, someone's nailing someone. I don't know if yeah. it's either of us. Yeah. That is, dear Lord. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. 
<laughs> Honestly, I'm sweating. Um, <laughs> dear Lord, do you, so I obviously know you're on the road a lot. Are you at this point full time? Is that too personal of a question? You don't have to answer. If you no, don't want to. I, I, I have been, I still do have a day job. It's okay. really close to getting full time, but my job has been really supportive and awesome. And they're like, yeah, like it's, comics are so like, I don't tell them anything. And it's like, I work for a clothing brand called Chubby's. Um, Dude, I have two bathing suits downstairs. Yeah, I've worked there for like five years. I've worked there for a long time, but I've just done a ton of like creative marketing stuff for them. It was like as close to a comedy adjacent job as I could have. And, so and they've funny, just yeah. been kind of like, look, you know, at, at some point, obviously they, they know that my goal is to be full-time stand-up and sure. That'll happen somewhat soon, but until then, they're kind of like, hey, as long as you get all your work done, you know, we're okay with being somewhat flexible with the road schedule when stuff needs to happen and, and have just allowed space. And so it's been, they've, they've been awesome. I mean, they should sponsor this podcast. Um, I'll let them know. Yeah, but separately. Uh, I'll play them the last clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll I'm sure they'll that. be really glad that I uh, name checked them right <laughs> after that. Well, we could do some creative editing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how long is this injury going to last? Well, I mean, back to, you know, full athleticism, probably like six months, like, you know, like full, 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 but like, I, I should be out of the boot in three more weeks. Probably. So I was able to avoid surgery. Yeah. I've been in a boot a lot. How did you avoid surgery? You tore your Achilles. How the hell did you avoid surgery? Built different. Oh, get the fuck out of it. You know what I am? I'm built different. <laughs> yeah. You see this boy? He's built different. Yeah. I have a lot of, uh, I just have a lot of foot strength. Oh, do you? Oh, that's what they said. They okay. were like, because he was like, push down, pull up, do all this stuff. And he was like, if your foot was like a zombie, like if it was kind of like hanging, he's like, we would have to do surgery. But he's like, but with your travel schedule and how you want to do it, we can, you know, we can do a, a full rehabbing of this without having to do surgery. I mean, you said travel schedule. How much are you on the road now? I'm just about to kind of do a full tour. Holy crap. You're yeah. kidding. Yeah, who knows how many tickets will sell, but we've got a, uh, I've got a ton of, I mean, I'm doing like, uh, it's spread out over a bunch of months, but it's like Miami, Tempe, Edmonton, Vancouver, Minneapolis, Sacramento, Portland, Austin, Dallas, is this Oklahoma all, City. Is this in order that you're doing this? Not exactly. because oh, I'm impressed with that, yeah, your ability to recall all those places. Yeah, I believe that's what we have for are now. You, and you're headlining? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Who Thank are you, you bringing? Anyone I know? Uh, I haven't figured, I mean, it'll probably be pretty case by case. Like okay. I, I think, uh, a lot of, uh, I'll probably use local openers a lot of time. Cause you know, yeah, we're not don't exactly know if I'll be clearing checks to <laughs> fly people out. I mean, a lot of it's one nighters and yeah, markets. Yeah. I have no idea if I'll sell in, but like, let's give it a shot kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it'll be a mix, a little mix and match. Did you learn? So for, for people that are listening that don't know, so I don't know. Actually, I don't know how you got connected. Let's start with that. How'd you get connected with Andrew? Andrew Schultz. I, I, I assume way back in the day. Yeah. Opening for him at a little club called Rooster Tea Feathers. No, that's where it started. Sunnyvale in 2017. It's like a club in Sunnyvale. It's next to a tire store. Can I tell you some best clubs are in the weirdest places? Yeah. No, yeah. it was so fun. It's a, it's a great club and it's like 15 minutes from where I grew up. So it's like hometown. Yeah. And yeah, that was the first time we met and then we got matched together at Punchline in San Francisco and then it kind of became a thing where it's you like- You said matched. I was like, what? Yeah. We were on Hinge <laughs> yeah, and yeah. we are mm -hmm. gay. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. That's a, one of the things about it's both fair. of us is that we're- <laughs> Yeah. We- Married and gay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. That's Reasonable. a sitcom. Yeah. Married, married, married and, and gay. gay. <laughs> yeah. um, but like separately. No, no, obviously. Yeah. Not the same. Why is there not like a big show about closeted dudes fucking? Bill. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Because that would be great. I don't know. You know what? I think you need to be pitching this to Hollywood. That's it. Yeah. All right. So, guys, it's called Closeted Dudes <laughs> Fuck It. Um, and here's the thing. The premise is the title. It's called So That's Why They're Mad Men. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, So you got matched up at Punchline. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. We had to get the pitch in. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah go ahead. So then, uh, and someone has to catch. Yeah. But, oh, no. Yeah. All right. So then it just kind of became a thing like he would come to the Bay and either he'd ask me to open or if I saw he was coming to town and uh, he didn't have an open. I'd usually try and come with, like he was filming so much stuff for YouTube. I'd be like, oh, I see you're going to be in Sacramento 
are you going to shoot one of these things? I can mm. link you up with all. I'd try to like provide some value and like stay in touch yeah, with not? ways that I could kind of help. That became a thing that lasted over a bunch of years. And he, you know, we became close and I've always really valued his advice. He's been someone I can go to to ask, you know, big questions. He's super yeah, yeah. generous. And, uh, you know, one of the further along comics is just so generous with his time and wants to help younger people coming up. So did he kind of give you the confidence to be like, I can add line? I don't know if I would say that. I, I think one thing that has been really inspirational was watching him go from selling decent but not selling out a club in Sunnyvale to selling out back-to-back shows at the Masonic in San Francisco yeah. over a four-year period and, and watching everything he had done and kind of seeing that it's possible to become a star based on doing stuff completely yourself and just working really hard and being really good and getting to see what he built. Like I always thought one day I could be a headliner and it just took me a long time to get better. Cause when he met me, I've, don't think I was like that good. No, <laughs> he you, no you, you, you weren't. Yeah, he said, I mean, he more yeah. or less wanted one time we were working together and he was just like, he's like, dude, you're so funny off stage. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> yeah, no! Like, it wasn't like that mean, but it was just kind of like, we went out one night and we were drunk and these, we were hanging out with people. These girls were like, let's go to a strip club. And for some reason I thought it was a bad idea. And I was just being a douche about it. Sure. And he was like, that guy's awesome. <laughs> he was kind of like, you're overwriting your stuff. You're too lost in your material. You're yeah. not being yourself. You're not being confident. You're not even kind of like talking down a little bit. He wanted me to do more of. He was just like kind of just put more of yourself into it. Interesting. Know? Yeah. And now you're going to headline. Are you yeah. nervous? No, I'm nervous to sell tickets, but I just kind of started headlining like a year ago yeah. and I've done like a few here and there. Like I did the punchline in, in San Francisco. I did the San Jose improv and because those were hometown shows, I was San able to sell improv, those out great. and it was so fun. And those were really cool to see like, oh yeah, I can put on a great 45 minute show. The, the hope is that people in you know, Oklahoma City know who I am and want to come see that. Listen, so if you're going to be out. near West Palm Beach, let me know. I'll send my mom to your show. Send her. She won't it's, go. Okay. Uh, I think we should probably hit our second segment. Yep. Uh, it's called Teach Me Something. Mm -hmm. Everyone I know in my life says I have a lot to learn, so I use this segment to do that. Yeah. It could be 10 seconds, could be 10 minutes, preferably not that long because I don't have that kind of attention span. Love that. What do you got for me? Do you ever play baseball? Not great. I was a good hitter. I was a terrible fielder. Okay. Do you know how to throw different pitches? Yeah, absolutely not. So there are two types of fastball that you can throw. Two seam, four seam? Yes. Don't know how to do it. Do you know the difference? Not at all. Okay. The four seam is going to be a faster pitch. It's straighter, but it goes a little bit faster than the two seam in general. Why wouldn't you always then want to do a four seam? Because the two seam should have a little movement on it. Ooh. Yeah. So... The two seam, you grip it along the seams like that. Okay. And so it's just by how you're touching the seams, it's going to have more movement. Ideally, maybe a little fucking down and in. You put your two fingers on the red seams. Yeah. And does it doesn't matter kind where your thumb goes? Down wise. Probably yeah. got a thumb on a seam down here as well. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. You, you don't necessarily have so to. So you how were you a like? pitcher when you played. I was a pitcher and shortstop. You do both? Do both. Does everyone do do more than one? Built different. Oh, get the fuck uh, out of no, here. No, in, in, in high school, yeah. <laughs> kill this guy. <laughs> in high school, you do because it's like if you're a good player, you want to like bat every game and then you sure. can't pitch every game, your arm will fall off. So you'd start, like I would start, usually we'd have games like Tuesday, Thursday. I would start on Tuesdays and then Thursday I'd play shortstop. You wouldn't relief? Would you be relief? I was a starting pitcher. Well, obviously. Why would you ever be a relief? Team pitcher? captain. Oh, of course you were. Built different. Built, yeah, built different until you were cut different. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know. I'm sitting here with a torn Achilles. Like <laughs> I'm a fucking athlete. Here's your four seam right yeah, here, yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. just straight gas. You want to climb the ladder? This is kind of a who's fucking daddy. Oh. I'm gonna throw this by you. I'm oh. gonna throw this high. I'm gonna throw this at the letters. It's a little out of the zone, but guess what? You're gonna chase. Oh, all and right. You're not gonna catch it because. Gasolina. I can't. If you're looking at a baseball, the two seam, your fingers are along the seams kind of with them as the seams are up and down. The four seam, you're going across the two seams and you're kind of gripping that top one and just, it's more of like a, almost, it's not really backspin, but that's kind of how it's fucking spinning out of your hand. What is your, what was your best pitch? It was my two seam fastball because I had a little nasty movement on it, but it was a little unpredictable. And then when I was pitching well, 
hit him with a, I had a really nice circle change, but when I was not pitching well, that thing would hang up there and it would go for a ride. What is the difference between a change up and a circle change? It's just, a, there are different types of change up you can throw. A change okay. up in general is just a pitch that is specifically designed to be slower than the fastball and you'd like it to have some sinking movement. Mm -hmm. It's different from a curve ball, which is, you know, cutting across, which you're spinning it. The change up, you're kind of locking your wrist out and it's supposed to kind of just drop off and be slower than the fastball. Do you miss playing baseball? Because you sound like you still have a lot of passion for it. Yeah, I do. I, I played baseball and ice hockey were my two like sports that I was good at. And those, I don't. I, I guess maybe they have correlation. I don't know how those two would overlap. The only reason I played ice hockey is because I grew up near San Jose, and the Sharks were like a fucking big deal in like the '90s, like early 2000s. My girlfriend's. Parents, very big Sharks fans, yeah. Oh, I'm a huge Sharks fan. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Some of the Sharks came to my San Jose show. I was very excited. Are you serious? Yeah. Did you like hit them up going, I love the Sharks, they all want to come? No, they they responded to one of my things. So Timo Meyer and Logan Couture, Logan's the captain, okay. Timo's the best scorer on the team. Sure. Great dudes. Uh, they I met them when I opened for Schultz at the Improv. Okay. And so kind of started, you know, following me and I, you know, told them I was a huge fan and all that. And so when I was coming to town, hit me up, and I was like, yeah, absolutely, you're on the list. And then the Sharks minor league team had me drop the puck at their game. Are you serious? Yeah. I don't care what anyone says. That had to have been like, kind of like a, oh my God, I kind of made it a little bit. Dude, it was cool. And and they gave us like a little suite. There's like a new minor league arena, Tech CU arena where the San Jose Barracuda play. I and they gave Barracuda me like a little suite. And shark we had, exactly. And we had, it was like really close family friends, my parents, you know, my wife, a bunch of my best friends. It was a super fun event. And uh, one of my friends was like, he's like, I don't know why. He's like, but that hit me more than the improv show. <laughs> he was like seeing, you know, having them announce my name and walk out on a carpet and drop a puck. It was kind of, it was crazy. It was surreal. Have you had any moments? I guess the, the answer has to be yes. But like, have you had any moments where you're like, I, I made it. That felt like it because it was like, I made it in my hometown. Yeah. Because I made this video to promote the show where I was like, I'm running for mayor of San Jose. It had all these local jokes and it got shared around a lot. That's what led to the whole Barracuda thing. It was right before Christmas that I did the show. And so it was like all family and friends yeah, came yeah, yeah, and yeah. sold out the improv, which is a big room. It was a very special night for me. And it felt like, all right, I've made it in this very one specific area <laughs> where like it took all of my everything to sell out 450 seats. And I had my kindergarten teacher was randomly there. Baseball coaches from the past, like it felt like a second wedding, but then it's like, I'll really feel like I made it when I can do that in a city I've never even been to. Does it get weird when, if you know your kindergarten teacher is in that room and you start saying dirty shit? Thankfully, I didn't know that <laughs> oh. until after she came up and she was like, do you remember? I was like, what the fuck? But it is kind of crazy having a show where it's like, okay, my mom and dad are here. My mom and dad's friends are here. My wife's, you know, parents are here. But like, it's just Ultimately, you just kind of go, well, everyone's here to see me do the thing that I do. So I can't start thinking about or changing that. And I've always had to perform in front of family and friends because I used to run shows in my hometown. And the only way I could sell tickets was by knowing people. Yeah. And so I've kind of always had to do that. So, you know, I feel pressure just because I want to do well, but then I can only do stand up the way I do it. You know, so there's no th way to think about changing it. Like, I mean, is your, your mom is never like, I heard the joke you did about banging your wife or whatever. Right. It is. I think my stuff is not clean, but it's gotten less filthy over the years. Interesting. Um, Why is that? Not because I'm shying away from it, but just because I was overly relying on it. Probably. Sure. I think I've gotten less harsh over the years is, is just ideally not having to rely on it as I try to explore different parts of myself that yeah. are less like once you're out of like having to fight for it in a loud bar, you don't necessarily have to be as bombastic, I guess. Yeah. No, wow. Okay. But like, but ultimately if you've come to see my show, you're getting my show. And like, I, I yeah. yeah, I mentioned off mic, your show got me in trouble earlier today. So I guess yeah, it yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know what, what comes up is what comes up. Whatever's happening. Like, 
I don't really try to, oh, I should write about this topic. I just lie down and I'm like, what's going on? You know, what's, yeah. what's oh, going yeah. on with me? What's, what do we need to talk about? Yeah. I don't think about, I write on stage a lot. So it's kind of yeah. whatever I'm thinking about in the moment yeah. is kind of what's going to come out for better or worse. Oftentimes that's like, okay, like that's it's about my personal life. It's about what I'm doing or how I'm feeling or who I am or blah, blah, blah. The only thing that like you run the risk of in my perspective is occasionally like I run into things where I say something that like someone else maybe really doesn't like. Because they're yeah. like, you had to share that? Yeah, that's a really tough thing to figure out because on the one hand, it's like you want to do the best stuff, which is whatever is the yeah. most interesting, whatever is the most real. And sometimes that's difficult stuff. And, and that's the stuff that's really powerful on stage because people might have something similar going on in their life and then they really relate to it. And then now you have this really great thing that is why you do stand up is for great things things that other people can relate to and awesome. But then there's someone who's like important in your life. that's like, fuck you. And you're like, well, is that worth it? I, I, am I being a piece of shit by including that? Like there's definitely a lot of funny content that is, I have not even touched that's on the table because I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to piss off family members or like right now, everyone's like behind me and loves what be I'm up, doing. Be up, be up. When I do the hometown show, everyone's there. I can't just start picking off people in my family yeah, and friends yeah, yeah. and making them look like assholes in front of all their so friends. So my buddy Steve is a piece of shit. And I yeah, think yeah, that, you yeah, know. Exactly. No, no. I mean, but the way, like, when you're talking on stage for periods of time, years, yeah, inevitably you might say something that, like, someone's not going to like. Of course. Of course. You know? Like, I remember I once got up and I was like, do y'all know this piece of shit, Joey Avery? Yeah. And then, but Joey Avery sucks. Well, what's weird? Reddit, yeah. Slip. Dot com. No one hated that section. Everyone was fine yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah. Then I started talking about the Jews. That's when everyone pulled back. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. but um, but the Joey stuff there. They love that. Yeah, yeah no, no, they were yeah. big fans. But anyway, I think, are you ready for the lightning round? Yeah, let's do it. These are five questions. They're fast questions. They don't have to be fast answers. I use this on an index card because I want you to know what it's like to be on a late night show. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen for you. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> you don't think they're going to like my middle ditch material? I think they're going to love it. Yeah. Okay, I'm shocked cool. you're not on all the Jimmys. Middle ditch zombie. Yeah. Fallon, Kimmel. Yeah. Who's, there's another Jimmy, isn't there? Cord? No, that's James. Well, James is a Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. Yeah. All the Jimmys. Yeah. Um, question one, what is a favorite ritual of yours? So like mine is brewing tea. Ooh, uh, having a wank. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wrap it up, guys. Uh, wrap it up. You know what? This is really annoying because this is like trendy and like health guy-y and I oh. don't do it as much as I should, but I am happy when I do it. Morning sunlight. Getting outside in the morning and taking in some sunlight. Is that a thing I should be doing? Oh, it? it's a huge thing. Really? You're not on that side of TikTok? I've probably just seen Andrew it once or yelling at you to get outside. I've I heard, I've heard that. Uh, essentially, apparently it's good for you to just go outside and get sunlight into your eyes when you wake up and I've found that to be true. Is it like, it doesn't matter if I'm wearing like SPF or do I need to like not wear SPF, just go out really you get the sun? You want the sun in your eyes. Oh, so it doesn't matter. Oh, I can't, I wear my sunglasses everywhere. You, not in the morning. Really? Sunglasses later. Oh. In the morning you want raw dog, sunlight, <laughs> To the eyes. So if anyone wonders, like, what did you learn from Joey? It would be like, raw dog the sun. That's right. Deep in your eyes. Uh, question two, what is a running bit you have with a friend or partner that makes you laugh? Whenever I want to needle my friend, I call him a rat fuck and he gets really upset. He gets upset at that? Yeah, it upsets him. The other thing that I called him that really made him mad, we were like on a vacation together and we were sleeping in the same room and he was just like, I, he was drunk and he was just being loud. He was like listening <laughs> to music and he was like, yeah, he was like, we're trying to sleep. He's singing oh, along in the middle of the night. Fucking insane. Yeah. And then I was like, hey man, and stop and then he's like going through his bags and stuff and the next morning I like sat him down and I was like dude you are a loud night operator and he was like I am not and I was like yes you are and he was like that's fucking bullshit you take that back and I was like I will not take that back you're a loud night operator you rat fuck oh now I go yeah, now, yeah, okay. he was upset so maybe the rat put him fuck together. Kinda, yeah. no no he does not like being called a loud night operator but he is that is such a weird scent. I love that though I want to call people loud night operators only but really only use it if it's true it is a scalding hot burn <laughs> like tea it's basically that's right it's like calling him an immature child boy. Well, he's a loud night operator. Can you talk to Jess because she calls me that. Uh, yeah, yeah. An immature child boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you do an impression of one or both of your parents? You know, pal, not sure that would be such a good idea. 
<laughs> that's my dad. dad. That's dad. my dad. That'd be dad. And then my mom is just going for a run. That's your impression of her, just going for a run. Yeah. Is she the most fit human alive? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Constantly like crushing her step goal. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she wears an Apple watch. Oh, yeah. Um, have you ever had imposter syndrome? And if so, is there a particular moment that like rings in your head? That's a good question. I mean, I feel like it's, I don't know. There is not a particular moment, but there are definitely times where I'll catch myself having the wrong thought. Interesting. You know, where it's like, you can have that thought where you're like, like a clip does really well or something and I got to like write new stuff. And I'm like, fuck, I'll never write something as good as that again. And then I'm like, why would you think that? You're a year better at stand up. Sure. You should only be getting better. And you're creating this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's like that type of stuff is almost really like self-serving. Like you're, you're being sure. just completely self-centered. Being like, oh, I, I don't know if I'll ever do something as good as that again. Or how am I? It's like, dude, what are you fucking talking about? Just do the thing and get better and stop. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I agree with that. I think I think it's hard for me sometimes to. I can intellectually get there. I can't yeah. emotionally get there sometimes. Yeah, emotionally sometimes. I'm, I'm like, no, like I like I, I deserve to be here. Like I, I'm I'm that good. And then that other voice in my head will be like, oh yeah, you actually believe that? Or are you just saying that you would piece of dog shit? Yeah, I don't know if I'm successful enough for full imposter syndrome yet. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you got to achieve anything things. for that. Yeah, dude, uh, I'm, no. I'm doing one nighters. I'm like, whoa, is it? This is crazy. I'm at the, I'm at the fucking Miami. Improv, <laughs> yeah, guys. no, yeah. I, 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 yeah, maybe, maybe when I get the further along, but, but yeah, no, I think it's for me, it's just like any bad mental experience that I have thinking about like stand up or my career or anything, it is directly correlated to how long it's been since I've done stand up. When I take really five or six nights off, I like have like, career anxiety. Am I doing the right thing? I get more nervous before the next show and like all this stuff. And then I like, just go do the thing. And I'm like, oh, I love that. That's awesome. That's yeah, like I'm why I do that. And it's fun and I feel good. And I feel completely off if I haven't been doing stand up for a while. That's good. Yeah. Uh, final question. I would say it's what's your favorite tea? Or if you're not a tea drinker, what's your favorite comfort? Mm, this is a random comfort one. I'm uh, into it. Soup dumplings. That's actually a great answer. Yeah. Where, where should I be getting soup dumplings? Well, if you want to drop cash, Din Tai Fung. Can't get a reservation. If you really want to drop cash, get it on Uber Eats. It'll take, it'll be like a <laughs> 90 minute delivery and it'll be expensive as fuck, but it slaps. It's, if I'm like, if I'm like, like I, I just got back from my friend's bachelor party and it's like, you just, you know, just feeling like shit, you know? Yeah, 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 sure. And I was just needed something and it was like, dude, soup dumplings, a little bottle of natural wine. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. Invite me to date night. Got loose. I'm it in. It was great. I'm in. It was fantastic. Yeah, a little bit of that. You know, invite the ice cream, man. I'm yeah. good to go. <laughs> yeah, bring it. Park your truck. I'll hear you bumping down the avenue. Yeah, you'll tunes. know. Yeah. You'll know. Yeah, leave the kids in the car. Yeah, and then we'll finally watch Black Phone, and you'll know what it's Perfect. about. There you yeah. go. <laughs> My man, thank you for coming. Yeah, I'll be fun. Thanks. thanks for having me. This of was course. great. That was Joey Avery. You can follow him on Instagram and YouTube at Joey Avery. You can follow him on TikTok and Facebook at Joey Avery Comedy. Steep Conversations is produced and edited by Lucas Marshka. Our theme song and additional music are by Oliver Hymack. Our cover art was done by Neil Fraser with photography by Matt Mazisco. Social media by Dia Villegas. Please write a review and rate our podcast on Apple Podcasts and wherever else you can. You can send any questions, comments, newly friend game suggestions, or tea suggestions to steepcombos at gmail.com or tweet us at steepcombos. I'm Josh Lanzette, and you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at Josh Lanzette. We'll be back next week. So until then, happy steeping.